Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect and like today we're going to be looking at RBAC roles on Azure. Hi guys, I'm coming at you from on the road this week. I am currently traveling, so I'm not in my usual recording place. So my equipment is actually my phone and my headset here. So I'm going to be recording on this today. So apologies for the lower quality audio and video. But in any case, today we're going to be talking about RBAC on Microsoft Azure using Azure Active Directory integrated with Azure. Now, RBAC on Azure is role-based access control, and role-based access control is used for setting up controls around Azure resources, groups, and subscriptions so that you can control who has access to what resources. So this gives you very fine-grained control over your security posture when it comes to who can do what and with what privileges. So today we're going to look at the three fundamental roles that exist on pretty much everything on Azure, and then we're going to do a brief demo of how these work and how you can set these up in the Azure portal. So when we talk about Azure, there are three broad roles we can talk about. We can talk about a reader role, we can talk about a contributor role, and we can talk about an owner role. And these three roles can be applied at the subscription layer, they can be applied at the resource group, or they can be applied to a specific resource itself. And these have three broad sets of permissions that you can assign whenever you create one of these roles in one of those particular domains that we just mentioned. And these are the ability to see resources, create and change resources and the ability to assign permissions to those resources. And as you might suspect, a reader can only see things inside of a resource or see resources inside of a resource group. And likewise, at the subscription layer, that would be the case as well. They can see things, but they cannot change it and they cannot assign permissions to the, those resources in those groups or in the resources themselves. Now, a contributor, as you might expect, would have the ability to not only see things, but create and change things. And contributors are pretty broad uh, permissions that you can give to folks that are like engineers that are need, needing to work in a specific subscription or a specific resource group. They need the ability to change things. They need the ability to create resources, but they you don't want to grant them the ability to assign permissions to that resource group. And that is done by design so that they can have the ability to make the technical changes without changing the security of a given resource or resource group or subscription. And as you might suspect, an owner can do all of these things. They can see things, they can create and change things, and they can assign permissions. Owners are the broadest set of permissions in anything on Azure, and this therefore needs to be ju used judiciously and not be given out to just anyone. So it's necessary that you assign a subscription owner so that that particular subscription owner can go in and create new users into that subscription and assign the appropriate roles for things like contributors and readers. And that might be sufficient for most use cases. In some organizations, there is only one user that's actually accessing a subscription and that is fine. And that user is generally an owner. Now, a larger organization like an enterprise might have a team of developers that are all working in a given subscription, so they don't need those broad set of permissions that an owner would have. You can simply assign to them contributor access, and then even in that organization, you might have like an auditor that needs access to that subscription just to validate that things have been turned on from a security perspective or things like that, but they don't need to change anything, and that's where the reader role would happen. Now, within the context of Azure, there are also a number of resource specific roles and we're not going to get into all of those because there's literally hundreds of them but understanding the contributor the reader role and the owner role applies to everything on azure and that these are the three fundamental roles that you will be seeing in everything on azure when you go to create permissions and assign roles on Azure. When we assign roles on Azure, it's also important to talk about role inheritance as well. So you have the basic hierarchy on Azure. You'll have a 
subscription, then you'll have a resource group. Then inside of that resource group, you'll have resources. And those could be things like SQL databases or VMs, whatever they might be. And then a subscription, you might have multiple resource groups with multiple resources. And however you organize this is largely going to depend on the application. But understanding the role inheritance is important so that you can assign the appropriate permissions at the appropriate layer. And as you might expect, if you assign something at the subscription layer, everything underneath that is going to inherit it. So basically, I assign an owner to the subscription, then by default, that person is going to be the owner of the resource groups in that same subscription. And then likewise, if I assign an owner to the resource group, that person is going to be the owner of the resources in that resource group. And so being careful where you assign roles will have implications on what else gets permissions inside of a given subscription resource group or even a given resource. So the inheritance will give you some broad categories which you can apply roles, but you have to be judicious about that this so that you don't create something that's too broad for the users that you're applying these roles to. I'm here in the Azure portal now, and I want to create a user first. And this is one of the most basic things you can do in Azure. It's very easy to do. You simply come down to Azure Active Directory and you click on user, and then you can create a user right here. So I'm gonna create a new user. In this case, I'm gonna call him, let's just call him new user. And he's going to be at meblaze.onmicrosoft.com. And I'm gonna give him the name new user, new user. And it's going to create a new user on my subscription here, or my tenant rather, and and it's going to want me to auto-generate a password. I'm going to assign an initial password, and it should make me change that next time I log in. I can block sign-ins, and I can also uh, set a usage location here. And a usage location is basically the ability to limit where this account can access my resources from. So if I want to be able to block it based on a geography such as the United States, I could do that. I'm not going to assign that though. I'm just going to go ahead and create the user here. And that does happen very quickly. And so I'm going to copy this principle for now because I'm going to use it in other particular parts of this demo, but the new user has been created. And if I wanted to, I could, I could assign this user to account to, to groups and do that kind of thing. The same things apply to groups though. Uh, you can create groups and assign them to RBAC roles as well, just as easily as you could a user. So what I'm doing here applies to both groups and to users. And to create a group, you basically do the same thing and come down here to groups and you can create a new group here and you can then assign users to that. Very easy to do on Azure. Now, with that done, let's go ahead and add that user to this roles demo that I have here. And what I have here is a new resource group, and I have a storage account that I've created in this already. And if I go to add in a new user to this particular group here, I can come over here and click add under access control, and I can add a role assignment. Now, the role I want to assign to this is contributor, and I'm going to assign an AD user, and then I'm going to you know, uh, paste in that, that principal name that I got from Active Directory and select that user. And so that user has been selected, and the uh, changes have been made. So if I go new user, it's um, there it is, and it's going to let me save it, and it's going to add that new user to this particular role. So if I come down here to access controls again and look at assignments, you'll see that I have a new user of type user as a contributor role on this particular resource group. And to view that inside of my resource group, I can come back over here to my resource group and then look at this particular resource in my resource group and I can look at the IM access control here and I can look at role assignments and we should see the same thing. We should see new user contributor resource group and it's inherited from the resource group level. So that's the role inheritance. This is the, the, the role that they have. So I should be able to with this new user then log into Azure portal and see these resources because I logged in because I'm now a contributor on this resource group. So let's go to a incognito mode so that I can get the particular access controls that I have logged in on the regular mode out of the way. So it will force me to log in. 
and there's no craft credentials or anything like that. I'm going to paste in that principle. I'm going to punch in the password that I assigned it, and it should prompt me to change that, and that which I'm going to do now, and sign in. Now that I am signed in, I'm just going to add, give me all these friendly prompts here about Azure because this is the first time this user has ever logged into Azure. And let's come over here to my resource groups on the menu. And if I come over here and look, I see the one that I have, and it's kind of giving me a tour here of my uh, resource groups. And I want to log in, or ch check this resource group here and then the, see what's in it. So I be, I'm able to see that storage account. And if I go to the access controls here, Again, I'm able to see things with this, I, although I cannot change it. So if I want to try to add something here, it's disabled. And the disabled um, roles here are because I don't have the ability to change these because I'm not an owner. The user I used to create these was my global administrator on my Azure AD, as well as the owner of the subscription that created this resource group in. So and they had the permissions to do everything they need to do. But this user doesn't have every all those permissions, so I cannot change the permissions here. So if I wanted to add a resource, though, because I am a contributor, I could very easily do that. I can't create a resource group, but I can um, create a resource in this resource group. And to do that, let's just create, say, maybe another storage account. Um, and let's just choose that, create a storage account. And I'm going to default to these uh, to this subscription, this resource group, and let's give it a name. Let's go test one, two, three, four, Blaze, maybe, and it's going to like that. And I'll just take the defaults on all this, and uh, we'll go from that. And once I'm done, we can create create that, and this will create fairly quickly. And we'll come back whenever this is done and look at it. Okay, now that that's done, let's go to my resource, and like the other. Uh, that storage account we looked at, I'm going to have basically the same level of permissions here that I did on that other storage account. I'm a contributor inherited from the resource group because this particular user I'm logged in as is a contributor at that level. And then I can also see both storage accounts in this particular resource group. Test123Blaze and Test1234Blaze are both storage accounts with the basically the same permissions that I have because these are all inherited from the resource group level. Now, I could assign an owner to this and make the particular user an owner of this particular resource group, and that owner can then go about changing permissions of this particular resource group. That is really not necessary for this demo, but you can see how the roles work here. And this is a very easy way to set up very granular control over things in Azure with those three basic roles. And as you might expect, there are much more specific roles that we could talk about. So if I went back into the storage account as the owner and I wanted to look at the particular storage account and add a role assignment here, what I'm going to get here is a bunch of roles that are going to be related to this particular uh, kind of thing that I could use inside of a storage account like site recovery operator, uh, storage blob delegator, and all these other very fine-tuned roles that could do very specific things in Azure. And there are literally hundreds of these. So you'd have to kind of figure out which one of these you would need to use for specific things in Azure if you wanted to get down to that level and you're delegating things as a storage file data SMB share contributor, basically meaning they can write files to a SMB share in Azure files. So you, you get the idea here that you know you can get very fine grain with these. And if a re, if a contributor role is significant and, and does what you needed to, then that might be fine. However, uh, you can get more fine grain with some of those resource specific kind of roles, which we were seeing there. So all in all, very fine grain controls over are back in Azure. You can do a, a lot of cool things with it uh, from a security perspective. And we're going to get more into some other ways that you can assign role access to these in future videos. But for now, let's start with 
are back on Azure, and we'll call it a wrap. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com, and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available, and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule, and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect Now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure-related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.